How do I do this? I don't know how I'm going to do this. Who's going to help me do this? So in this episode, I'm going to share with you how millionaires handle the pressure and prevent burnout in this episode of 7 Freezer Squad happened in 3, 2, 1. What's crack a lackin' everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Seven Figure Squad studio here in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. So in this episode, I'm gonna share with you how millionaires prevent burnout and handle the pressure. Folks, I'm excited about this topic because I remember coming up as an entrepreneur. I remember coming up in these dreams I had about being financial free and financial independent and without having a college degree, without having a sales or a business background, without having an insurance background, which is the field that I'm in right now, like I'm figuring all this stuff out. I gotta pay the bills. I gotta, I gotta uh, take care of my children. I gotta take care of my responsibilities. I gotta feel good about myself. And so along this journey, I, I, was, I was stressed out in many different ways. So I'm gonna share with you a system and a process and a strategy for, though, for those of you as out there said, man, how do I get this done? I know I got the concepts, I got the why, and I just need that little bit of the how to. So on this episode of the Seven Figure Squad, I'm gonna share with you a story about the redwood tree. So what am I talking about the redwood tree? So a lot, lots of times people say, I want to plant roots. I want to grow roots. Well, this is a story about the redwood tree. So the redwood tree, the story goes, the reason why the redwoods are so special, these are big, tall trees. Um, they stay strong in winds, weather and still storms. Even floods cannot destroy the redwood forest. They stand tall and survive for millions of years because the roots intertwine with other redwood trees. So let me share with you this, this analogy. So let's say you're growing your business, right? You're growing your business. You want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire. And so therefore you plant roots. You're growing. You're a tree. You're a redwood tree. And the winds of life are blown by. The winds of life are blown by. The question now is, how deep are your roots? More importantly, how strong are your roots? Because these roots keep this tree in place. Floods, wind, storms, they may try to implant. They may try to get you to tumble, right? Divorce, baby mama drama, bills, death, sadly, health issues, financial stress. All these are the winds of life. The question for you is, how strong and how deep are your roots. Let me get back to the redwood tree though. The interesting thing about the redwood tree is big as these trees are, the redwood tree, some as high as 360 feet, one might think that being a tree like this would have some deep roots, right? Here's the reality of the redwood tree. The roots only extend down as big as these trees are, 100, 200, some as high as 300 feet. Their roots only extend between six and 12 feet down. In other words, as big as these tall trees are, the roots only extend six to 12 feet downward into the soil, into the earth. You think as big as this tree is, as shallow as these roots are in the ground, you think that winds would come in, uh, uh, rain, storms would blow these things away. But the reason why they're not is because they make up for it with breath. What do I mean? Extending up to 100 feet from the tree's base, they intertwine with the roots of others all holding on to each other, greatly increasing their stability. The redwood supports its forest and its friends. The roots help each other and create a big network of support that creates strength and stability. So in other words, let me give you, uh, let me give you a quick visual. So other trees are next to it, right? Other trees are right next to it. Other trees are right next to it. Other trees are right next to it. They band together and as, as their roots grow deep into the ground, what they do is they support, they intertwine with one another. So it's just not their roots, it's this tree is not only depending on its roots to go through the winds of life, to go through the storms of life, but they depend on the community and the help of other people. Man, does nature not preach or what? So I've been thinking about this situation. You as a first generation cash flow millionaire, for those of you that are picking the entrepreneurial deal, the reason why people the first issue is the reason why a lot of people have a hard time dealing with it is because they're dealing with themselves. Me, myself, and I. And I'll tell you this, the journey of being a first generation cash flow millionaire, especially those of you that's going through the entrepreneurial side of things, it could be a very lonely world out there. I've been thankful and grateful for the majority of my 21 year career as an entrepreneur for being a first generation cash flow millionaire is that I've, by default, I can't say I was intelligent doing this or smart doing this, but by default, my wiring was like these redwood trees. I needed to find a community 
the people that I can lock arms into, lock my roots with over, over the long term. So therefore I can sustain when life hits me the hardest. So some facts here about some entrepreneurial mental health statistics for sadly depression. Approximately 30% of entrepreneurs report having depression. Why? Because of the pressure and the stress of, of their endeavors. 90% uh, of startups fail within the first year. The pressure is on for the entrepreneur to produce results. Uh, another fact here, 30% of entrepreneurs struggle with depression. Only 50% of non-entrepreneurs reported facing mental illness. <laughs> so some of you guys are thinking, Matt, you're, you're selling me and teaching me that I shouldn't be an entrepreneur. Well, here's the thing. It's either you deal with pressure from having a job and a pressure of the results of not having stable income because you're, you're dealing with a ability for somebody else to pay you or the fact that you are striving to be an entrepreneur, you're striving to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, and you're saying, listen, I want to, I'd rather bet on me versus somebody else uh, that's betting on me. Another fact here, according to researchers, many entrepreneurs share innate character traits that make them more vulnerable to mood swings. Quote, people who are in the energetic, motivated, creative side are both more likely to be entrepreneurial and more likely to also have strong emotional states. Some of those states Maybe depression, despair, hopelessness, worthlessness, loss of motivation, and suicidal thinking. But I'll tell you this, on the flip side of things, when things are going right, none of that stuff matters. When things go right and you seek fulfillment outside of just having somebody else pat you on the back or seeking fulfillment outside of just money, these things don't matter. I'll continue. Here's another stat. It's estimated that 11% of the U.S. population suffers from ADHD. However, the occurrence of ADHD in entrepreneurs is nearly triple that number. Uh, by the way, drop it in the comment section below if you feel you deal with one of these things. If you are a future millionaire, drop it in the comment section below. What type of emotions are you feeling? Are you fe feeling anxiety? Are you feeling depression? Are you feeling stress? Do you feel that you're ADHD? Like bing, 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 bing. You can't keep your attention uh, focused to one thing for very long periods of time, only for short periods of time. And the last stat here, approximately 27% of entrepreneurs reported dealing with some type of anxiety only 1% higher than the rest of the population. While most people worry about putting food on their own tables, entrepreneurs worry about feeding the entire village. And these stats were pulled from the National Institute of Mental Health. So that being said, sounds kind of like a very tough task for you to say, man, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur or I'm gonna be a first generation cash flow millionaire. I know, I get it. But here's, here's one of the things that many of us are facing ourselves on this path. It's probably a big reason why a lot of people don't understand you. It's probably a big reason why either your initial friends and family who sadly operate from a mentality like, just be calm, just be like us, just get a job, settle down, relax. Why go after your multi-million dollar aspirations? Why do you become a million anyway? Why do you need to be financially free anyway? Just be happy with your job, clock in, clock out, and see us for beers on Friday night. See us for the weekend. Hang out with us in so-and-so, uh, so-and-so's house. Well, listen, for some reason, me and many of you watching this video, you're just not wired that way. And by the way, if you're not wired that way, God bless you. There's probably some other YouTube channels for you to consider to have the calm, normal nine to five life. For the people, the majority of the Seven Fair Squad community, you say, you know what? I want more out of life. I want what life has, I want the more of what life has to offer. I just shouldn't be seeing life through magazines and these luxurious places and these different experiences that people have through, through just print material. I want to actually experience it myself. What's the difference between them and me experience it? Nothing. Well, let's process this together. When you're going through the activities to help you become a first generation cash flow millionaire, there's really generally three types of activities. And usually when people are dealing with depression, they're dealing with anxiety, they're dealing with doubt, they're dealing with disbelief, is because they find themselves working hard at the wrong things. Let me explain. Three types of activities. I've broken it down to three major activities. Number one, you're either productive activities, is what I call money-making activities. These productive activities make you money. For example, in our particular business model, we only have four activities. That's it. Four activities that make us money. Everything else, we delegate. The second part of this you have to identify is non-productive activities. Non-productive activities. In other words, these things don't make you money at all. It's just busy work. The third type is then recreation where you're working on yourself, where you're working on the business, not in the business. In other words, you're working not inside the picture, but you're working on the frame. You're working on things like systems and structures to prepare yourself to make more or better productive hours or productive type of activities. So the reason why a lot of first generation, big thinker type uh, cash flow millionaire mindset folks is, is having struggles at times dealing with this, and they feel like they're alone dealing with this, 
is because sadly they don't teach this in schools. Sadly, they teach other subject matters. They teach other, other topics and home economics, how to bake cupcakes and how to deal with a basic checking account with none of it being your real money, how to write a check even though you may not have money a check account to write or, or dealing with a periodic table where you don't remember more things than H2O or O2 or CO2, right? But a lot of subjects in school are what? Wasted in my opinion. And the things that do matter like money and relationships and, and your spiritual health, your mental health, they're not discussed in schools. I think that before we're gonna expect schools to change things around, we gotta do this on our own. We gotta teach our kids better. We gotta teach ourselves better more importantly. So I wanna uh, reference this article here in Inc. Magazine on the psychological price of entrepreneurship because listen, if you're willing to pay this price, I'm gonna tell you this from being on both sides of the money coin. I've been broke and I've had money, right? I've been, I've been broke and I've been rich. I've been, I've been 240 credit score <laughs> to 800 credit score. I've had no money in the bank to now have money in the bank. And I'll tell you this, there is a price to pay, so therefore you can be on the other side of the money game. And here's some of that psychological price. Many entrepreneurs often juggle roles and face countless setbacks, lost customers, disputes with partners, increased competition, staffing problems, all while struggling to meet the payroll. Oftentimes as an entrepreneur, you're one of, you are the last person to get paid. You pay everybody else, you pay your, your partners, you pay your employees, you pay, your, you pay your, your, your vendors, your suppliers, and the last person that gets a paycheck is you. See, that's what leaders do. And complicating matters, new entrepreneurs often make themselves less resilient by neglecting their own health. They eat too much or they eat too little. They don't get enough sleep and they fail to exercise. See, these are all activities, working hard at the wrong things. And so recently, my wife and I, we flew down to Dallas, Texas. Went to go see with our mentor. Went to sit down with our mentor, uh, a CEO, founder of PHP Agency. We had a business planning session with him in Dallas. Uh, we flew down there that morning, shotgun trip, spent time with him this, that, that afternoon and flew back that evening. And he laid down our life. He laid down the activities. He laid down the things that we need to focus on, the things that we pay attention to and not pay attention to. And I want to share with you a little bit about what he shared with us. I think it's important for you guys to see that because it allows us, allows us to process things. Maybe it's going to help you because it helped me have a lot of clarity. Help me have a lot of understanding. Help me have, have the understanding that, wow, I can really deal with a lot of pressure more than I thought. Because how often have you seen somebody in the gym? How often have you seen somebody run? And you look at them like, how the hell do you run 26 miles? How the hell did you run 26 miles? How the hell did you bench press 315 pounds, 415 pounds? How did you, how did you lift that up? You don't even look like you're able to lift that stuff. You know why? It's technique. You know why? Because there's certain basic skills and fundamentals there that allow them to handle that pressure, to run that distance and make it look easy. So as I look at this, I wrote down some things here, nothing specific to my wife and I, but I think in, in areas of generality, we have our different eight or nine different things that we focus our lives on. But generally speaking, write down the areas that you want to be good at. Write down the areas right now that surround and consume your life, your day. I'll give you some examples. Faith, where are you at in your faith? Do you want to be good at faith? You want to be important in your spirituality? Your family, do you want to be a good family man? Do you want to be a good father, son? You want to be a good daughter? You want to be a good mother? Finance, where are you at in your money? Where's you, where are you at in your money game? Fitness and health, where are you at in your health? Where, where are, in your, 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 are you above weight, uh, ideal weight? Are you dealing with some pre-existing conditions? How much fun are you having? Listen, this whole process and journey towards becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire, along the way, you gotta have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, career and business, relationships and contributions to your community, contributions back and being able to pay it forward. So. For example, write down these things that you want to be good in your life. Might be different for you. I just wrote down a few things. These are what, this is what I call my crazy eight. It's kind of funny that it's eight because it's kind of like your crazy eight. This is uh, such as life, such as the process of becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire entrepreneur. And so I wrote down these eight categories of what many of you might consider doing well in. And so the first thing here is rate where you're at. Where are you in these categories? And answer this question. What gives you the most stress? So I'll give you an example of where I was before I started making money, before I became a cash flow millionaire, before I decided to take my life seriously in this endeavor and actually having a system to process things. So if this, this is me, if I was to do this and rate myself where I was, broke, busted, disgusted, frustrated, angry, right? Here's, here's why I would rate things, of these eight things. The thing that gave me the most stress was number eight, career and business, you know why? I don't know if I was gonna stay in the military or if I was gonna stay in the military, I'd be deployed. 
Or if I got out the military, what would I be doing? I don't know what I'd be doing. So that gave me the most stress. And since it gave me the most stress, guess what also took it most stress? Finances. Because I never had any money for anything. And it's not like I was making a lot of money in the military to begin with. And since I had a lot of uh, stress with my finances, I couldn't provide for my family the way I wanted to. I was a single dad. We uh, survived, I don't know how we did, we survived on top ramen noodles, we survived on corned beef and hash and rice, we survived on eggs, we survived on spam, we survived on beef stew from Hormel. You guys know what I'm talking about. That's, anyway, that's where my situation was. And since I was stressed out about that, it took a toll on my health. Because I was eating those bad foods. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't exercising. I think I barely got to the gym every three, four months. Uh, and since I wasn't taking care of my health, guess what? I can give a crap about relationships. I don't want to hang around nobody. I was depressed around myself. I don't want to be depressed around anybody else. And if everybody's having fun and I wasn't, I, that'd even make me feel even worse. And speaking of fun, I wasn't having a lot of fun. And the last thing I was thinking about was my contributions to my community. And uh, guess what? The thing that gave me the most peace, the thing that gave me the least amount of stress was my faith. Because man, as an entrepreneur, as a person starting a business, a new endeavor, as a person, as a single dad, as a person that was, 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 was looking to uh, do something big and special in his life, man, you find your faith very quickly. <laughs> oh Lord, how am I going to do this? Right? How am I going to be payroll? And the least, the, my biggest refuge was with my faith. However, fast forward this. Fast forward, now that we started making money, we did an assessment of Patrick, and we, uh, uh, I had somebody to soundboard this off of. I realized that my wife and I, we did this exercise again. Of course, we have different specifics here. You have different specifics too. These are kind of general categories. But here's the way we rated ourselves. The last thing that gave us stress, thank God, because faith was still number one, was, was our spirituality, was our faith. The second thing that didn't give us a, a lot of stress was really right here, our health. The thing that uh, gave us the least stress, again, in order, was family. The thing that gave us the least stress was finance. So think about this. Once I got the understanding of the things I'm about to share with you in a second, the thing that stresses people out the most, one of the biggest things that stresses out people the most, now that we're starting to make money, now that we're starting to, to, to understand the system and the process and the predictability about things, the biggest thing that stresses out most people, it wasn't stressing us out any longer. Like I said, I've been on both sides of the coin. I've been broke and I've, I've had money. And I, I would rather have in this process of me making money evolve. Because now, once we got it, we appreciate it, we're grateful for it, we're thankful for it, we don't want to let it go. So let me continue. As I was rating this, as I was rating this again, uh, we weren't worried about having fun because, man, shh, recreation. Uh, I, I'll tell you this, uh, my wife and I, we got married uh, 2-21-2015. A week later, we're at a convention to learn how to build a business, to learn how to build our career, to start learning how to make a difference. We officially, we've been married now for a long time. I can't tell the exact date. What was it the exact date we got? Anyway, we've been married a long time. <laughs> Wait, when, when, when were we married? Five and a half years. This is, bad. This is, good. This is a good blooper to put inside the video. When, when did we get married? Um, oh, we've been married now for a little over five years. But sweetheart, if you're watching this video, it's been, it, I feel like I've been married to you for 30 days, okay? That's how much fun we're having. Uh, but we officially haven't really taken a long vacation more than a week. And if we do take a vacation, it's a company paid trip. So it's not like we've kind of detached and not ran our business and, and, and we've integrated a lot of those things. But by the way, a lot of people look for balance. How do I find that work-life balance to deal with the pressure and deal with burnout? Listen, we found ways to integrate our family with the things that we do in business to create harmony. Not to say, oh, we gotta have 25% you know, here and 25% here and 25% here. No, no, we weren't looking for balance. We're looking for integration. In the process of me wanting to be an example for our kids, the way we integrated the way we did business also built relationship with our kids. Where now our kids know what an entrepreneur is. Like quite frankly, I didn't even know what the word entrepreneur was until 10 years ago. Could barely spell the word. But the kids now, they're exposed to money. They're exposed to the word entrepreneurship. They're exposed to the word capitalism. And so when we're looking at these things, if I would rate it again, the things that, the, uh, the things that gave us least uh, stress was career and biz, right? Uh, relationships, our contributions to our community. So what you gotta go through to prevent burnout and allow you to handle the pressure is to sit down and reflect. Communicate to yourself 
and the loved ones around you what you want in whatever categories you want to be good at. And what do you have to prioritize? So here's the thing too as well. Sadly, back, back to over here, the type of activities, if you want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, I'm sorry, I have, to, I, have to, I have to admit this to you. There is no such thing as get rich quick overnight. So, so well, man, I just started entrepreneurship uh, last year. I'm not a millionaire yet. Duh. It's not supposed to happen that way. And by, by the way, for you to make money like that, it's what we call a flash in the pan. Good luck making it a second time because you got lucky. You don't want to get lucky being a first generation cash flow millionaire. You just want to be a, you, know, you, want, you don't want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire for just a year. You want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire predictably year after year after year. And your money's growing and compounding and you're getting better at this thing. So reflect about what you want in your life and what you need to prioritize. And you need to have a conversation with your loved ones. And so Matt, you know, the, the, the woman I married, the man that I married, uh, they may not understand what my dreams and aspirations are. Well, great, because you haven't sat down and talked to them yet. You haven't had that heart-to-heart -heart communication. You haven't sold it to them because probably you haven't sold it to yourself because they're looking at you. Oh, you want, you want to go down this path? Let me see you sell out to it. You, you go first and you should because they want to see if you're serious. Maybe you've created a relationship or a reputation with your friends and family, your spouse, your loved ones that you say you're going to do something we never follow through. That's why I don't believe you. It's not their fault. Hey, it's your fault. Accept it. Own it. Take responsibility and improve upon it. And when you start applying yourself and it's consistent and you're showing progress and you're showing financial results, guess what happens to your spouse? Oh, hey, honey, what are you doing? <laughs> How can I help you? Here's, uh, how'd you make that money? Listen, if you want support from your spouse to help you handle the pressure, so therefore you pre uh, pre prevent burnout, make some money. Have some success and enjoy it together with them. You know, in our, in our office, uh, we had uh, just this last weekend, we had some of the couples that we were mentoring invite us to their own uh, couples uh, get together. They had, uh, they had a team retreat. They said, well, we're getting together here in, in a loft here in downtown Chicago. And we're just so pr proud of them. Jasmine and Ella Suazo. This year to date, because of their ability to process and reflect these things, we've been mentoring and coaching them. This year, throughout the pandemic, they made $197,000 so far year to date this year. The better part, they're starting to coach and teach other people the rules of the money game. They're coaching and teaching other people the basic fundamentals of what they're learning. They're paying it forward, their contribution. They're improving their community. They're saying, you know what, there's a problem in the black community. And a lot of it is economic. We made $197,000 this year as an entrepreneur in the insurance industry. And hey, we want to pay it forward. And people are listening. And people are investing. And people are investing their time. They're coming up, spending time with them. And we're able to share some thoughts with them. We had a cigar. We're having a conversation with them over dinner. And to see us and be able to affect the community without them having to say, you know what, man, how do I to fill out this COVID check stimulus application? How do, I, how do I get my unemployment check? How do I do it? No, no, no. Forget that stuff because that's short-term thinking. That's not now future cash flow millionaires think. Say, hey, how do I fix this long-term? Why? Because they're able to reflect. They're able to find out what matters most. And more importantly, they're willing to put the work in because they prioritize what was productive, what was non-productive. So the third category to evaluate and process this together is the word recruit. What am I talking about recruit? Okay. I started jotting down the things, these activities, right? The categories and activities combined together because there's certain categories you have to fit activities into, right? And I had to break down one of three things. I needed to figure out what I was good at. I had to figure out what I was excellent at. And I figured out what my unique ability is and I can't have anybody else do it. Like me, myself, and I, that's unique to me. I need to be the one that's doing it. So I rated myself in these categories that I need to recruit help in because certain columns and certain categories of my life that I wanted to have less stress in, I realized I was either good or excellent in. I'll give you an example. I realized that the things I really didn't help, need help in was my faith. You know why? Because I know how to pray. I know, I know exactly how to tap into the source. But I did need somebody in, in the areas of faith to hold me accountable. And that could have been weekly service. That could have been Bible study. It could have been, I remember one time for uh, two years, I'd study with somebody the Bible uh, from 6 to 8 o'clock on Thursday nights. 
Okay, we break down scripture, break down Bible, start with prayer. We break down scripture. One of my favorite books of the Bible is Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, because those are the wealth and prosperity and happiness and enjoyment type chapters of the Bible. Uh, but I had accountability there. So I needed to recruit somebody because I, I wasn't necessarily unique to it. I knew somebody else was good or even excellent at breaking down scripture for me. Some areas I needed help in. For example, fitness. I have a personal trainer, right? Why? Because I realized that my time is getting more and more limited as I was handling more pressure. I realized I needed fitness. I needed an outlet to allow my, my basic body algorithms and what we call that, the Arcadian rhythms to, to uh, operate and, and make sure that I was eating the right nutrition. I had the right foods I was eating. I was feeling good about myself. I look good. I feel good. I feel good. I do good. If I do good, hey, that's all good, right? And uh, I, I want to make sure I have a trainer to hold me accountable to my times in the gym. And therefore, if I spend an hour, it's targeted. I know what I'm doing. I'm working the body part. I'm not lazy. I'm actually getting out of the workout the hour I spend at the gym. Boom. Because I realized it's not my unique ability. Somebody was good at it. Somebody was excellent. I need to hire a person in that, in that area. Finance. We need to hire ourselves a good a, a accountant, a CPA. We need to hire yourself a good uh, a legal counsel and make sure we have the right corporate structures and we're, we're uh, protecting ourselves uh, in any agreements that we do in, in business. Uh, family. Again, accountability there. We need a counselor. We need, we need an outlet to talk to. Why? Because I can't tell my wife and she can't tell me to do this, do that. We're both alphas, right? You do this, I do that, you do this. We're pointing fingers at each other. We need accountability there through a counselor. Counselor. We need a counselor. Whether that's somebody related to our faith, they had to be, they had to be faith based. They had to understand entrepreneurs. They had to, the counselor had to understand that we're dealing with a lot of pressure. It just wasn't us that we're worried about. We're worried about a lot of other people too as well. Um, fun. Uh, zero delegation there. I, that that is my unique ability. I love to have fun. Comedy. I love having. I love I love uh, recreation. Going out. I'm a I'm a outdoors water sports type of guy. So no no, uh, no necessary help there. Now, when we did go have fun, we did went travel places. Who who can take us around? Who would be our guide? So if uh, if we're if we're gonna uh, uh, enjoy a city, if we're gonna enjoy a different country, uh, the, the the insurance companies are flying us all over the world. Can I have a guide to make sure we make the most out of the hour, two or three hours, or the one, two, three days that we're actually there to create the experience, the Instagram pics, all that stuff while we're having fun. And next category here, relationships. You're thinking, well, I don't need any help. I don't need accountability to help me have relationships. Well, yeah, I needed networking groups. Okay, so I, therefore I can build relationships. Uh, I need I need a, I need a part of the chamber of commerce to, to help me go in and meet a lot of people in a short period of time, shake some hands, spread, spread the message of our company that we can help people here to hire people, recruit people uh, for other opportunities that we have down the road. Contributions to our community. What type of accountability partner do we need there? Uh, somebody that uh, helps us give charity. Uh, some of that we give back. You know, every October, our company all across, all across the nation, we have charity events, whether it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month or Fighting Human Trafficking. We're raising money once a year for our contributions and our give back to the community. And I realized that I didn't know how to organize all this stuff. That's not my unique ability. I need to hire somebody that's good or even excellent at doing that. Our staff was able to engage their, their skills in, in helping us do that. And last but not least, career and business, accountability, a coach, a mentor. Because he had us realize a few things. Let me go back here to activities. In all these different categories, you have to find out what's productive in these categories and what is non-productive in these categories. Because the word recreation, okay, that ties the two in between, comes from the root word recreate. So therefore, in your recreation, as you take time to pull away from you involved in those different types of things, you're recreating yourself to a better tomorrow, to better next month, to better next quarter, to better next year. So therefore, your efforts are compounding over time. You know, sometimes people tell me, man, you know, I, uh, I don't sleep. You know, I work, I grind, I grind, I, I don't sleep. I, well, listen, man, is that productive or is that non-productive? Because your numbers are telling me you're non-productive. But dude, I don't take a day off, bro. Are you productive or non-productive? What actually are you doing? You might be working every day, you might be in the business, you might be in the office six, seven days a week, working 12, 14 hour days, but are you working on productive activities that make you money or are you there just to be there? So if I was a fly on the wall and I paid attention to what you did all day, the small talk that you have, the things that distract you, the checking this website, next thing you know on this website, next thing you know on this website, or you watch this video, next time on this video, and this time on this, this video. Oh, I got my text message here. Oh, I got it. somebody called me here. Oh, I got to pick up the kids. All these different things start getting you not just productive, but they start swinging you over into being non-productive. 
So therefore, you go back to the category of a career in business as a person that wants to be a first generation cash flow millionaire. That's how important an assistant is in your life. We had an assistant in our home, in our family. It's called a nanny. Why? So we can stay focused on the only four activities for us that make money. So whatever that is for your career, whatever it is for your business, if you say, hey, there's only a few things that make me money, you need to then stay there. Other things can be delegated to people who are unique at that. Because not, if, you are, if you find yourself excelling in non-productive activities, you're not, yourself, you're not gonna find yourself as a successful entrepreneur, nor a first generation cash flow millionaire. You might find yourself as a successful assistant, but not a successful multi-millionaire. So back to recruit, you need to recruit talent, you need to recruit staff, you need to create systems and projects, which leads me to my next point. You need to then, once you gather that information, once you gather that data, you need to then relaunch putting yourselves a deadline. When am I going to get it done? Okay, I got this awareness. This was exposed to me. What's my deadline to actually incorporate and implement what I need to fix? Furthermore, what type of systems or what type of personnel do I need to hire to get me to where I want to go? So when we're looking at a deadline, why do we put a deadline? Well, if you don't put a deadline on it, it's never going to get done. So for example, I'll give you an example here in our insurance business. We, uh, we bring on board a, a brand new person. They're a trainee in our system. Uh, man, I can't wait, man. I want to change my life or career. Awesome. The only way we can pay you is if you obtain insurance license, which you have to pass 150 question multiple choice test. Right? Cool. I'm ready to go. Call. Did you call to actually schedule the appointment? Let me read that one more time. Did you actually call to schedule the appointment to put it in the calendar? Because when you have it in the calendar, you have a deadline. If you have a deadline, you're going to study for it. And I, 90% of the time, 95% of the time, when people don't have a deadline, guess what? They don't get licensed for a month. They don't get licensed for two months. They get licensed for three months. And then we wonder, what are you doing here? What do you want to accomplish? Because generally speaking, you don't want to make any money because you didn't put yourself with that. I know, I know, but I had this go on. This happened, blah, 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 blah. And here, here's, here's the thing. Here's the sad reality. And I don't want to sound insensitive when I say this. I know divorce happens. I know death happens. I know health challenges happen, especially right now during COVID-19. All these different things will happen to you and they are relentlessly attacking you. I get it. But if you want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, you have to find a way to, to have the systems and processes to say, you know what? Okay, here are my systems to handle this. I'm anticipating this to happen. Here's my system to process it. Here's who's going to help me share the workload. Here's a personnel that's going to say, hey, I got this, man. You go, 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 go. I got this. I got this. Who are, who are those people? What is that system? Did you anticipate it? Did you communicate it? Did you expose it through the reflection process? Did you recruit the right talent? Did you recruit the right efforts to get you to say, man, I need some help? Because here's the thing, here's the thing, making a million dollars, is it simple? It is. But is it easy? Of course not. Because along the way, there are so many exit points. There's so many different distractions that get you off your goal. So the first thing is schedule a deadline. For example, I'm going to make my first $100,000, boom, this day. I'm going to make my, my, next two, my next 250 here, boom, next 500000 And therefore, once you're clear about it, Every decision you make then will easily go into one or two things. Not productive, you delegate, or productive, I need to keep the main thing, the main thing. I need to keep the main thing, the main thing. Uh, arguments between you and your wife. If you're not thinking about having that argument five years from now, you shouldn't spend five minutes on that conversation. You say, babe, I'm sorry, I love you. Smooch, smooch, move on. Oftentimes a lot of arguments are based on pride and ego. And one of you needs to be the bigger person. One of you needs to say, you know what? By the way, same thing to business partners, associates. Y'all dog, you called me out that one time and uh, yeah, and uh, because you're my friend, I take it a lot more personally from you. And by the way, bro, you're right. You're right. You called me out. I took it personal. Instead, I, I should take it like you're calling me up, that like you want me to do better. Back to the redwood trees. Back to the community. These systems, these processes, the people in your life, are they holding you up? Are they intertwining their roots together with you? And that's how important this relaunching. Or maybe you've been intertwining your roots with somebody that doesn't want to go anywhere. They're okay being broke. 
They're okay with the same old, same old. Another day, another dollar. Good enough for government work. Those are some of the things we used to say when I was in the military. Versus saying, man, what's the best that I can do in this situation and the opportunity that's been given me? So, as I wrap up, ask yourself these three questions. These three major categories of questions. Number one, what life did you sign up for? What life did you actually sign up for? You wanted to be a cash flow millionaire, first generation cash flow millionaire, right? Well, guess what? You got to be able to handle the pressure. You're looking to put yourself in the top, what, 1% of income in America. And that's okay. If, and by the way, for some of you, you need to start thinking like, well, maybe if I'm top 1% of America, hey, listen, 99% of America then is not thinking the way you want thinking and watching the content that you're watching. By the way, I don't expect everybody to watch my videos. The only people I expect to watch, watch my videos are people that actually say, I want to get better. I want to get better at handling pressure. By the way, you got to thank yourself that you've been put in a pressure situation. Why? Because that's where diamonds are made. A piece of coal, pressed, earth, gravity, boom. Many years, many generations, pack, pressure, pressure, pressure. Eventually what makes that pressure a result of? A diamond. Precious situations make the most precious rock. Women's best friend, most coveted piece of jewelry is made from pressure. But life, what life did you sign up for though? If you say, Matt, I, I just want to make $100,000, great. Well, there's some degree of this intensity for you making $100,000 a year. Matt, I want to make $10 million a year. Well, there's even more intensity for you to handle this type of pressure. What life did you sign up for? Because you shouldn't be complaining. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. If you said, yes, this is the life I signed up for, then you should be able to say, hey, this is part of the territory making that decision. I remember one time I was in the Marine Corps and uh, uh, some of the Marines were complaining. Staff Sergeant walked up to him and said, listen, can I remind you of something? He says, what's that? You joined the daggone military. More importantly, you joined the Marine Corps. You joined the Marine Corps. You, you signed the dotted line. You volunteered of any other branch of service. You could be in the Air Force, the Coast Guard, the Army, the Navy. But no, you chose to voluntarily sign the dotted line to enlist into the Marine Corps, the finest fighting force in the United States of America. You signed up for it. And now you're complaining that you got to do this, you got to do that. Let me remind you, the life that you signed up for was to be in the Marine Corps. For, the, for example, for you here, the life that you signed up for to deal with this pressure. Well, Matt, there's a period of time there I might not see my kids at five o'clock for dinner. Exactly. Because you actually got to put the time to create and lift this thing up off the ground. But I'll tell you this, once you lift this up off the ground, it's a different phase now. Integration, enjoyment, quality of life. You know, the last thing, I can't remember the last time I had to worry about a bill. I can't remember the last time I looked at a dinner menu and I looked at the right side of the menu. You know what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm talking about you sitting down and ordering whatever restaurant you want to go to. Denny's, <laughs> Lori's Prime Rib, 16 here in Trump International Towers is a Michelin rated restaurant. And you sit down there, boom. By the way, have you ever sit down and got, uh, got a menu and there's no prices on the menu? You know, those are the most scariest ones. <laughs> <laughs> they don't tell you the price of food. Listen, if you got asked what the price of food is in this restaurant, leave, leave now. What life did you sign up for? Why did you walk into the restaurant to begin with? What life did you sign up for? What do you want? And more importantly, why do you want to be a first generation cash flow manager? Process that. By the way, if, if you realize that you don't want to be a cash flow first generation manager, forget this video. Forget all this stuff. Live an easier life. It's okay. Go make 20K, 50K, 60K, 80K. Be average and ordinary. Because here's what millionaires say. I'd rather be crazy and rich than normal and broke. Because my family deserves better. Because my parents deserve to be retired. Because my child needs special needs and I need to provide better quality of life for him or her. My family back in the Philippines, my family back in Lebanon, which is Ali recording this video right now. My family back in Dallas, Texas, where Ivan was recording. My family back in Jamaica. My family back in, in Guatemala. They deserve better. That's why I want to be a first generation cash flow manager. I, I need to send money over to help them. I know it's not going to happen overnight, but eventually you get to the point where you can be very generous because of the efforts that you generously put forth to get you there. Second question, who can help?
Who can help you? What type of support staff? And by the way, don't be cheap with the people that you hire. Don't be cheap with your staff. Give them an opportunity to have a piece of the revenue when you make money. When you, when you make money, they make money. Uh, oftentimes I see uh, people hire, fire, hire, fire. There's never any continuity. And the first reason why? They're too damn cheap with the, 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 the payment and the, and the salary they arranged. You got to find a way for your people, your team to feel that they have part of the, uh, part of the pie too as well. Leverage. What type of other relationships do you have? Do you have a fellow entrepreneur that can talk to your team? Because after a while, sometimes your team, your office, maybe even your family will get tired of hearing you, but they need to hear from somebody else. That's why sometimes the families go to church and they listen to the pastor. And the pastor is saying something that the wife is saying, oh my gosh, yeah, honey, he's talking about what we were just arguing about last week. Boom, elbow shot, boom. And then the husband says, hey, I'm not giving any elbow shots, but hey, babe, listen, uh, I think you need to pay attention too. <laughs> it's leverage. That's where, that's where a good counselor, that's where a good mentor, that's where good friends come in in this community as expressed here of the redwood trees. What type of groups they need to be a part of, right? Uh, uh, our guys in our firm, we travel somewhere together every three to six months. Every three to six months, we're somewhere together physically when we can be. We just came from an, uh, a board council retreat in, in, uh, in, um, in uh, the Breakers Hotel in Palm Beach. We're about to take our guys to a, a private signers meeting to an undisclosed location here in the next few weeks. Uh, obviously, socially distanced and masks uh, appropriate when, uh, whenever, uh, whenever necessary. But we're having a blast doing it. Why? Because the groups, the relationships that are built from like-minded thinkers, more importantly, like-minded doers, creates an exponential confidence in one applying themselves and handling pressure. Number three, what habits do you need to acquire? Uh, we read a book last month called Atomic Habits. Small habits done incrementally over a small period of time creates atomic huge results. What skills do I need to acquire? Why? Because from skills comes confidence. Right? And confidence is that fact that either you do it or somebody else does it. Why? Because if you acquire that skill, is it going to be productive or is it not productive? So, for example, I'm in a service-based business. I need to get good with interpersonal relationships. Soft skills, they say. So hard skills, like for me, I don't need any hard skills for my position. I don't need any hard skills for my, my business because I'm not a doctor. I'm not a dentist. I'm not a, an attorney. I'm not an engineer. I'm not an architect. So I don't need hard skills. I just need soft skills. I'm in the insurance business. I'm in the money business. I need to get along with people, especially with people I don't like because people I don't like may open up to opportunities to people I do like. What type of habits do you have a routine? So those are the things that help you compound and handle and deal with the pressure that doesn't take a toll on your health, doesn't take a toll on the quality of life, the, the breath of life that you want to live. So therefore, you avoid and prevent burnout. Oftentimes when people say, man, I'm cooked, I'm burnt out. You know why? It goes back down to this thing. Did you work hard at the right thing or the wrong thing? And by the way, you know, I'm, I'm taking a new position in my company. I'm the chief distribution officer of our firm. I've been an entrepreneur, I was, I was laughing at my staff here, I'm, I'm taking a salary from my role as a chief distribution officer. Listen, the last time I took a salary check for somebody was 2003. Last 17 years, I've paid myself and dealt with the pressure and dealt with the stress. It's odd for me to take a, pay, a paycheck, it's odd for me to have to report to a boss, but I'm doing it because I'm giving back to the company that changed my life. And there's a new role and responsibility that I'm uncomfortable in. And guess what happens when you're in the uncomfort zone? Growth, opportunity. You're able to say to yourself, man, I, I'm able to carry this. I'm able to bur I'm burden this. And the only time that you look back, look over your shoulder, is to see how far you've come. So with that being said, guys, I want to encourage you. If you feel yourself uncomfortable, great, you're growing. If you find yourself comfortable, you're not growing. And in my estimation, either you're growing or sadly, you're dying, you're atrophying, and you're not getting any more out of your life than you were yesterday, the day before, and you're good in service to somebody because of your lack of innovation to get better, you become less and less marketable in the marketplace. So if you want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, I'd love to know your thoughts, your feedback on this segment. We'll drop it in the comment section below. What are you going to improve on? Are you going to improve on uh, evaluating yourself and reflecting on yourself? Are you going to reflect on reprioritizing some things? Did you have 16 categories and you need to reduce it to 12 or 10? Because here's the thing, when I, when I realized this, when I did this chart for myself, I had like 12, 14 categories. I had 12 or 14 categories, or I had one category that was taken away from the other, and I had to reduce. Sometimes, 
The most powerful word is not the word yes. Sometimes the worst powerful word that you can use is the word no. Say no, this is the time I need to spend time on. And anything outside of that is just a distraction. So I wanna know your thoughts, I wanna know your comments. Drop it in the comment section below. Love knowing your feedback. How are you preventing burnout? How are you handling the pressure of becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire? And by the way, we're starting to get some merch sites, so make sure you go to our website, Seven Figure Squad, because we got some merch coming up. Let's see this pillow. Woo, this is a new pillow we got here, the Seven Figure Squad pillow. Good for your couch, your comforter, wherever you relax. And mind you, to think like a millionaire, to strategize like a millionaire, and obviously for you to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Before I wrap two videos, I want you guys to consider watching. Number one here is how to overcome the guilt from your family and friends of wanting to become a millionaire. And the second video here is, do millionaires really have multiple streams of income? I found out that many times the multiple streams of income actually is not really streams of income, they're actually multiple trickles of income and not even equal to one stream of income. So. Watch this video to make sure that you focus and channel your energies on the right things and create yourself a Mississippi River of cash flow that allows you to become a first generation cash flow millionaire so therefore you can avoid and prevent burnout and handle a lot of good pressure. So with that being said guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this episode of Seven Figure Squad and how to strategize like a millionaire. Make sure if you haven't done so already, you follow our business page if you're watching it on Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit notification to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I'm your money smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.